Hi friends! In this video, I'm going to be reading a book called What Do You Do With an Idea? Now, let's go over our parts of the books. What is this page called? The front cover. And what is this? The back cover. And this is the spine. It's what holds the book together. What does an author do? The author writes the book. And what does an illustrator do? An illustrator makes all the pretty drawings and the book does all the art. All right, let's start. One day I had an idea. Where did it come from? Why is it here? I wondered, what do I do with an idea? At first, I didn't think much of it. It seemed kind of strange and fragile. I didn't know what to do with it, so I just walked away from it. I acted like it didn't belong to me. But it followed me. I worried what others would think. What would people say about my idea? I kept it to myself, I hid it away, and didn't talk about it. I tried to act like everything was the same as it was before my idea showed up. But there was something magical about my idea. I had to admit, I, feel, I felt better and happier when it was around. It wanted food, it wanted to play. Actually, it wanted a lot of attention. <laughs> it grew bigger and we became friends. It sh I showed it to other people even though I was afraid of what they would say. I was afraid that if people saw it, they would laugh at it. I was afraid that they would think it was silly and many of them did. They said it was no good. They said it was too weird. They said it was a waste of time and that it would never become anything. And at first, I believed them. I actually thought about giving up on my idea. I almost listened to them. But then I realized what they what do they really know this is my idea i thought no one knows it like i do and it's okay if it's different and weird and maybe a little crazy i decided to protect it to care for it i fed it good food i worked with it i played with it but most of all i gave it my attention my idea grew and grew and so did my love for it I built it a new house, one with an open roof where I could where it could look up at the stars, a place where it could be safe to dream. I liked being with my idea. It made me feel more alive, like I could do anything. It encouraged me to think big and then to think bigger. It shared its secrets with me. It showed me how to walk on my hands because it said it's good to have the ability to see things differently. I couldn't imagine my life without it. Then one day, something amazing happened. My idea changed right before my eyes. It spread its wings and took flight and burst into the sky. I don't know how to describe it, but it went from being here to being everywhere. It wasn't just a part of me anymore. It was now a part of everything. And then I realized what you do with an idea. You change the world. The 
and that's one of my favorite books. I think that it's very cute. I would also like to read you another book today on this video. I have the book called The Rainbow Fish. So let's get started. Should we go over our parts of our book again? What is this called? Our front cover. And what is this called? The back cover. And the spine. What does an author do? An author writes the book. What does an illustrator do? An illustrator makes all the pretty pictures. It draws. A long way out in the deep blue sea, there lived a fish. Not just an ordinary fish, but the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. His scales were every shade of blue and green and purple, with sparkling silver scales among them. The other fish were amazed at his beauty. They called him Rainbow Fish. Come on, Rainbow Fish, they would call. Come and play with us. But Rainbow Fish would just glide past, proud and silent, letting his scales shimmer. One day, a little blue fish followed after him. Rainbow Fish, he called. Wait for me. Please give me one of your shiny scales. They are so wonderful and you have so many. You want me to just give you one of my special scales? Who do you think you are, cried the rainbow fish. Get away from me. Shocked, little blue fish swam away. He was so upset, he told all of his friends what happened. From then on, no one, had, no one would have anything to do with the rainbow fish. They would turn away when he swam by. What good... Are the, what good are the dazzling, shimmering scales if no one, with no one to admire them? Now he was the loneliest fish in the entire ocean. And one day he poured out his troubles to the starfish. I, am, I really am beautiful. Why doesn't anyone like me? I can't answer that for you, said the starfish. But if you go beyond the coral reef to a deep cave, you will find the wise octopus and maybe she can help you. The rainbow fish found the cave. It was very dark inside and he couldn't see anything. Then suddenly two eyes caught him, caught him in their glare and an octopus emerged from the darkness. I have been waiting for you, said the octopus with a deep voice. The waves have told me your story. This is my advice. Give your glittering scale to each one of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the sea, but you will discover how to be happy. I can't, the rainbow fish started to say, but the octopus had already disappeared into the dark cloud of ink. Give away my scales, my beautiful shining scales. Never. How could I ever be happy without them? Suddenly, he felt the light touch of a fin. The little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please don't be angry. I just want one little scale. The rainbow fish wa wavered. Only one very, very small shimmery scale, he thought. Maybe I wouldn't miss just one. Carefully, the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and gave it to the little fish. Thank you, thank you very much, the little blue fish bubbled playfully as he tucked the shiny scale among his blue ones. A rather peculiar feeling came over the rainbow fish. For a long time, he watched the little blue fish swim back and forth with his new scale gl glittering in the water. The little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing. So it didn't take long before the rainbow fish was surrounded by other fish. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right, and the more he gave away, the more delighted he became. When the water around him filled with glimmering scales, he felt, oh, he at last felt at home among the other fish.
Finally, the rainbow fish had only one shining scale left. His most prized possessions had been given away, and he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish, they called. Come and play with us. Here I come, said the rainbow fish, and happy as a splash, he swam off to join his friends. The end. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you all are at home staying safe and healthy. We can't wait to be back in the classroom. Bye.